Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, there you go. How are you? Good. How are you doing? It's so funny. Um, while you weren't in the call yet, your guy was like, Amy. And I was like, no, this is Teresa. He's like, wow, you guys sound alike. <laughs> and I'm just like, I hear what? it. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. That's hilarious. I was like, oh, I can call people now and be like, hey, this is Amy Lee. Amy yes. Lee, can, hey, I've got some work for you. Yeah, do it. Whatever you need. A whole bunch of lighters. Calls. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Let me tell you. I do other stations like all over the iHeartRadio world. So I too have to sit there and cut liners and liners. For, yeah. So now, now I get like the world that you've been living in. You just like <laughs> a- endless cities and endless like yuck, yuck morning show names and oh, all that kind funny. of stuff. So yeah, whenever you need help, I got you. Um, right. So how are you doing? I'm good. I'm pretty good. It's a rainy day. Um, I'm practicing. I'm trying to get keyboard sounds for, we have a live stream coming up. So I'm trying to recreate keyboard sounds, which is actually really hard to do. <laughs> so you, you turn all the knobs and get a certain sound a certain way. And then like, if you don't save it, it's almost impossible to get it exactly the same way again. So I'm doing my best. You need to do like some master class, like uh, Mike Shinoda, uh, you know, from Lincoln Park, he's on Twitch. And whenever he's on Twitch, he does like master classes and he shows people how he makes music. That's really like, cool. He's super cool. He's better at all that than me by far. I'm a hack, but um, you know, I, I know my couple of keyboards. No, I think you'd be really good at it actually, because think about it. There's, I've never seen anybody on keyboards, especially when you think of Evanescence, you think of that synthesizer sound anyway. Yeah. That'd be great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Get on Twitch, Amy. I could do piano lessons. That'd be fun. That'd be kind of cool. I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, how has the, uh, how has the pandemic treated you i know you guys have been busy and i mean obviously we finally have the new album which yeah. has been out for a minute but are, are you guys still inside like what's your what's your status um we it's awesome um i i we're still mainly locked down uh, my husband's fully vaxxed i am halfway there um and we're all kind of in progress like that but um we are getting the americans together for a live stream uh that we're going to be doing very soon so they're getting ready to come here um and we're going to be practicing covid tests and all that so it's just, you know it's possible to still do things it just takes a lot more work you know you just have to like really think things out and um sometimes do them differently um, of course, with Jen, she'll have to still be virtual. We tried to get her here. She's in Germany and mm-hmm. she's been stuck there since before the pandemic. We luckily recorded four of the songs that we released as singles right before the lockdown last January, February. Um, but then since then, we've had to work with her remotely, which has just, I mean, that just sucks. That's it's harder. It's not how you want it to be. Um, but we found a way, you know, we made it happen, but we almost, she spent a rough day at the airport trying to like get here. She was going to have to quarantine and like, oh yeah. And all kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, I think about, uh, I went through all of the, I mean, I, the, the album first off the bitter truth. It's so, it's so good. Thanks. It's so good. And I mean, we had synthesis last, you know, so this is kind of like, I hate when that people say an old school evanescence kind of sound, but it's loud. It's, it's rough. It's, it's, you know, it's exactly what we always kind of fell in love with in the first place. Cool. And I was looking at, I was going through all the music videos because, you know, the music video is dead. And I always make sure to go check out these videos to appreciate any work anybody's done yeah. and wasted on you caught my attention because you guys filmed yourself uh while basically in quarantine Mm -hmm. and to me I'm looking at it thinking this is probably exactly how it was legit like you know in the moment you guys just recorded stuff and made the music video um it seemed pretty real life was it real life it was real life we just you know we had our husbands and wives and you know everything just like get us like help us um some of it was ourselves it was cool to be an artist in a different way like that Um, we've made videos before, obviously. So I've been a part of like writing and costume design and stuff like that, but to be actually filming was different and cool. And, you know, with artwork too, we've had to do it in a different way. Like that album cover, that was just me and my husband last year, because we needed an album cover kind of early on because we started releasing singles last March or April. Um, so yeah, you just find a new way and you know what, it's not impossible. It it actually kind of opens your mind creatively because you have to break out of your comfort zone, you know, break the routine, sort of rediscover how to make art and find, discover new talents and all that. So yeah. Well, everyone did a great job. The uh, music video was really good. All the music videos are good. Um, if I could ask you, I mean like the most cliche, but what's your favorite track from the album? Because I try to go through and find that like 
that one ah moment song, but they're all like, they're all like bangers. Like they're amazing. So which is your favorite from the whole it's, thing? It's impossible to answer. They all do something different for me. Um, it's, it's definitely an album. Um, so it's not like there's a song and then the rest of it is like, you know, the world yeah. that that song lives in. They, they kind of all have their own thing. And honestly, these songs are a collection of things that have been worked on, you know, over the past decade. So I couldn't pick one. It would be leaving out so much. Yeah, there are, there's no throwaways in there. That's for sure. Um, I was going to ask you too. Well, I had people, I mean, because when you think of Evanescence and I'm in Houston right now, obviously, Evanescence has played BuzzFest after BuzzFest. We've had you come through town. The Synthesis Tour was a great show to watch because you had the orchestra with you and it was such a, it was almost a little more intimate. And I yeah. really, and I, I even said it on the air. I was like, you know what? I kind of, I love a good Evanescence show. Don't get me wrong, but there was such an intimacy about you being up there with the orchestra. Yeah. Would you ever, would you ever do that again? I mean, oh, yeah. just in that capacity. Yeah, that was really special. Um, and it, it took a lot of guts. It's funny because like, it is more intimate. And when you think about like strength and courage, you know, all those things you think about, you know, probably the heavier music, but it, it's kind of the other way around because when you've got the flashing lights and the banging guitars and drums and all that sound and noise and action, you can kind of hide in it. I mean, yeah. I can just run around and be in my hair. And if I'm having a bad show, I can fake it pretty well. You know what I mean? With that one, it was like, we really did something cool in a couple of ways. One was just on the audio itself. We took it to venues where we could actually use the acoustics of the venue instead of just blasting through the PA. Um, so to really let the orchestra, it, it was like a combination of uh, when you go to a classical show and it's really using the auditorium, not mics and PAs and stuff. But then with our with our sound and the electronics and the stuff going on, we need some PA. So it was actually like a half and half balance, which is weird, but it meant that the volume level had to be less. It was just a whole thing. And we built it so that there would be these moments of total tightrope intimacy um, where it's like just my voice for a while. No click. Oh, no man. Nothing. You could you <laughs> could hear a pin drop. There were moments yeah. where I was like, please don't sneeze. Or like if my totally. stomach gurgles because everyone's going to hear it. That's how like, what if I was. burped? Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, yeah. Um, but it, felt, it was really such a good thing for us. Um, after we got past the first couple of weeks of just like being kind of terrified, honestly, and it's a different orchestra every night. So that's a big variable. Um, once I got past it, it was like embracing those totally terrifying, intimate moments was so cool just to stand it and go, what? Like yeah. I'm doing it. I'm not afraid. It felt really, really, really good in a different way. And then it felt good to come back to the rock too, you know, cause we did that for quite a while. So it, it almost pushed, pushed us over the edge in the other direction when we came back to make this album. Well, it was good because you introduced me to Lindsay Sterling. I remember having her on the tour. I actually followed her on Instagram and I follow all this great music she does. So yeah. uh, I'm sure she's very thankful for you bringing her. <laughs> bringing oh, same. Her be a part same. Of that. It was a world collide moment. Like she it was amazing and, and, and in another world, you know, with her fans and, and her presence. But I think we all kind of felt like it was just a cool educational mind opening experience. You know, it's been a crazy like to have the bitter truth drop at this time. And I think of Taylor Momsen, you know, the pretty reckless, their album is doing absolutely amazing, but it's this, you know, big, uh, the year of the woman and women are dominating everything. And the one thing, like when people talk to me about being, you know, in radio, they're like, well, how does it feel to be a woman in radio? And I always say, well, I like it because I mean, I'm a woman and I'm in radio, but I don't put myself in that category. Like I come in here and I, I work and I want to dominate yeah. all. And yes. it, it almost is, I, I can't almost stand when people talk about that. I've seen articles where it's like <laughs> women in rock yeah. and Amy, Amy Lee is, is for the women in rock. No, like, and I've said this on air on every station I have. I'm like, Amy Lee is a front person who dominates in the world of rock. Thank it's you. not just a category. It makes yeah. me nuts. Thank you. That's awesome. That is exactly the point. Um, yeah. If, if, if gender isn't an issue at all, like we should all just kind of be able to live and create and compete equally, like on the same turf, there's just so much music out there. Um, and to be able to be great at what you do in your field, it, you just don't want it to be a defining factor. I, I've always loved that about 
us like about me because it I think differences are strengths like the things that will make you stand out you know and be able to be a different perspective a different voice something that doesn't just blend into the scenery is a good thing um but the more of us the better and there's so many different things about um everybody but like our music that I think is like interesting and worth it and everything else about us that doesn't have anything to do with that we want to be the goat not the guat yes I I I say that all the time and I'm like there are men that watch Evanescence and go I want to be like her you know like it doesn't matter and I'm like I'm, I'm tired of us being categorized when we're supposed to not have categories why do we keep categories? It's so funny. It's funny because it's like, well, it's good that everybody's talking about it, but it's also like, okay, stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. Ah, <laughs> uh, it makes me nuts. And I, w- there was like, there's been so many things with you and Taylor lately uh, because of both albums. And I just, I want to rip my hair out. So I'm glad I had a chance to like vent that to you. Okay. And you're on the same page because I'm like, quit categorizing us. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, I did, uh, let's see, we've got the bit of truth. I know you've got some, um, I guess you have some Euro dates. Doesn't mean anything to us. In 2022, I'm assuming that we're going to start putting dates on the map. Possibly before that. That's good. I, 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 it. You know, I'm, I, I can see everybody shoving their shows into the fall because it's a good safe space, I yeah. think. So yeah. to know that is good news. And I'm like, the ballsy ones are going to give us a 2021 show. I just feel it. Yeah, we're going to be doing that. I can't I announce it. it yet, but we're working on that right now. That's good news to know. Um, I opened this because I know I only have you for like three more minutes. Uh, I went to some like fan questions and uh, Stacy asked uh, an interesting question. She was like, how did the giggle come after call me when you're sober? <laughs> That's so cute. Right. Uh, what a great question. I don't know. It just felt right. Um, it's one of those things like I try to like go for like structure and planning and everything else. And um, then when something just happens in a take, you're like, yeah. It was just something that sort of happened. And I was like, we should keep that. <laughs> I mean, it kind of goes good with the song. You it goes know? with the like, song. There's nothing more horrifying yeah. than a woman giggling because you just really don't know what's on the other end of that. So I mean, I, it's a pretty catty last line. Like throughout the whole song, it's saying like, make up your mind. And then at the end, I'm like, hey, I've made up your mind. <laughs> yeah. But that, I'll laugh. That's cute. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Look, I know you have a lot to do and I'm so happy that this album dropped for everybody watching this right now. You've got to go dive into the bitter truth. Every single song is just exactly why we fell in love with this band. You've done a great job. I don't know how I can bow down all day, but it's all sick. Go watch the music videos. We can't wait for those U.S. tour dates. And I'm glad you gave us the inside because now I'm very excited. I will bring that uh, to the airwaves as well. And I mean, I, I can't wait for the, when are we going to know about the uh, virtual live stream show? When um, is that going to announce? It's, an, it's been announced. It's like the, it's like Cooper Tires and Alice Cooper present um, Evanescence and there's garage bands competing to be the opener, which is pretty fun. So yes, um, yes. I think the date is the 13th that it's going to air, but um, we're gearing up for practice now. I love it. Well, have a great practice. We can't wait for it. And I can't wait to see you in town because I'm hoping you're Thank coming you. here, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. So. Yeah. And whenever you need a, a voice double to, you know, do some work I will for you, call I got you. you. Thank I got you. you. But I do for a living. So it's all good. <laughs> all Thanks right, so much Amy. for taking the time. Have a good Rock one. On. You too. See ya. Bye.